Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Victoria 3, where we are playing as Ethiopia. Now, in our last video, we were able to successfully implement colonial affairs, as you can see from this gradual process that has started in the Rift Valley here, which we were able to accomplish with the uh, derpiest civil war in perhaps rec all of recorded history, wherein multiple sides just uh, forgot to defend certain fronts and uh, our allies in Egypt did nothing but we owe them a favor now anyway but never mind that the important thing is we have a supply of coal now now I have spent the last couple of years relatively idle simply building up our admin admin points our bureaucracy points so we could First of all, incorporate more territory, and second, and more importantly, get colonial affairs moving a little bit faster. Uh, we'll also be boosting our education uh, in a bit, but uh, right now, um, education doesn't have a hard time limit on, on it, whereas uh, our colonization process pretty much does. Because as I mentioned in the last video, uh, Kenya is going to not be free, free real estate anymore, sooner rather than later. Pro probably by, by around the 1860s, or at least that's, that's how it was in my practice game. So, we're going to need to take care of that before they roll around. In the meantime, speaking of taking care of certain things, I figure now's a good, as good a time as any, to start incorporating the rest of our neighbors in the horn. So we will get a con conquer state diplomatic play and hopefully uh, these, uh, these, other these other people won't, uh, these other countries won't get involved. Failing that, I think uh, what we need to do is butter up the Prussians since they seem terribly interested in this place. Uh, they've got a cooperative attitude toward us, but let's uh, make sure it stays that way. And that they don't stick their nose in our business. But... Hopefully, Tedros will be able to uh, scare these folks into submission. Egypt, what the hell? What the hell, man? Well... With any luck, Egypt won't have uh, won't have deployed a general, uh, just as they didn't deploy a general to uh, in in the last conflict. So I'm not too worried. M maybe they're just busy. Now I won't be able to add any war goals to. Uh, to Egypt, uh, best I can hope for is that they'll uh, is that they'll back off once they uh, have realized that they haven't done anything. Now let's hope this gambit pays off. This uh, rather gamey gambit, taking advantage of the rather early state that Victoria 3 released in. Not going to dwell too much on the negatives here, though. And as I suspected, the Egyptians aren't doing shit. So hopefully that continues to be the case. It's not the case for the. It's not the case for Galetti. They're still. They still have a general deployed. So I'm wondering if this is an. If this is in fact not a glitch, and perhaps Egypt's got something wrong with them, something going on with them that they don't have enough bureau, bureaucracy points to apply to hiring a general, which would be an interesting development. I don't know.
Either way, it's convenient for me. Well, in any case, we've uh, unlocked a next level of uh, educational institution in investment, uh, although we're going to need uh, yet more admin before we can get to that. Which leads us to the question of what, where, what our next development should be. I think we should probably head towards... Towards railways, perhaps, or perhaps not. Hmm, well, improving our tooling is going to be necessary before, although. Before we can uh, we can start m even mining iron, we're going to need to start uh, with uh, crude wooden tools, and so building a tooling uh, a tooling workshop in Gonder is going to be necessary eventually. Although we do have other things we need to do first, uh, increasing our lumber supply and boosting our admin still further. Let's get our education investment up a little higher. Oh no, I should not be attacking. I don't think. Well, I didn't think I'd be able to add any war goals. If I'd known Egypt was going to be this inactive, I might have added Eritrea and the rest of Eritrea as a war goal as well. Something to perhaps keep in mind for later. In any case, we've won one battle. So, let's get defensive along the front instead. Since we can't add any further war goals, there's no point in wasting more death. So we have a capitulation. Now let's see if we can get a white piece. And excellent. So... That is Southern Somalia added to our empire. Eventually, we're going to have these iron mines fully built out. Although, as I, st as I stated previously, we're going to need more lumber to build primitive tools so we can start extracting uh, iron. And then we can probably switch to pig iron tools immediately after that. And... Um, use those and, and kind of do an Ouroboros thing where we're using the, uh, the pig iron to get at the uh, regular iron. Since at the moment our, uh, our market is closed off and as I have uh, hinted at previously we are not going to be able to change this trade policy until we can get industrialists to go from marginalized, a marginalized in interest group, to at least opposition. So, let's bolster them. And we're also going to uh, start seeing more of them once we get our first tooling workshop in place. And our first paper mill. Tooling workshops and paper mills are going to be the first things uh, we build. Um, some handicraft as well, perhaps. But, um, yeah, the, the, general, the, the general thought process. We're going to need lumber for construction and for, tool, and for early tooling. 
so we can get iron and so we can get this coal so we can eventually build up to build uh, have our own supply of steel and get steel construction when the time is right and we'll have enough of, an, of a domestic industrial base that the industrialists will be able to join the government and pass uh, pass a trading law that allows us to trade with other countries and at that point we should be in business uh, we should hopefully be able to do this uh, I, we should hopefully be able to get to that point by around the 1880s I think and uh, once that starts we'll have about 50 years to build up our strength so we can challenge whoever the weakest European power in the region is and become a recognized great power that is the plan now that we have our domestic supply of coal, though we don't not yet know how large that supply of coal is going to be. With our education being boosted as well, we're going to have less of a problem with our pops being qualified to work at these factories. So to that end, here's the building queue I have up at the moment. We need one more admin building to, uh, to handle the change we just made to our education institution. Then more lumber, because as of right now, we're still short on that. Then a tooling workshop so we can get the iron mining started. Another to tooling workshop, more lumber. Another tooling workshop, more lumber. Essentially, we need to expand our lumber, our tool, our production of lumber, tools, and iron uh, before we can expand pretty much any other business we have. So that's the plan in the long term, and uh, we'll take care of these two, uh, these two Somali miners later. Now, as you can see, we have ever so slightly expanded our foothold here in the Rift Valley. It took us about five years to do that. It'll take us less time for this next one uh, because of our increased uh, colonial institution. We're not going to be able to do this again until we discover uh, the prophylactic against malaria, uh, quinine. I'm not sure how... I think it's pronounced quinine with a long eye. Uh, but it, well, in, in any case, the prophylactic against malaria. I, for, for whatever reason, I can pronounce prophylactic, but not quinine. In any case, uh, things uh, are continuing as planned, and I will update you the next time there is a major uh, development. So we built up our bureaucracy just a little bit, and so I think as we build, as we now build up our lumber supply, I think uh, there's no time like the present to make our presence uh, to. I think there's no time like the present to uh, wipe out one more spot on the map that we don't have yet. Tedros is getting up there in years, if his beard is anything to go by. But he still uh, he still has a few he still has a few years left in him, I think. Quite a few, possibly. Uh, leaders tend to live for a very long time in this game, particularly compared to uh, Crusader Kings Three, where they never seem to uh, live as long as you want them to. Uh, we've got Egypt supporting them again, but once again, I don't think they're going to do shit.
See if we can't add Eritrea to this. And we're also getting our conscripts involved. Okay, Warsongali itself should not take long. Oh, they're deploying. Well, maybe things finally became serious in their mind when they saw that uh, we actually wanted something from them. Instead of just something on the coast of the Horn. Now, uh, maybe, given time be able to actually supply some of these uh, some of these units but I have a I have a I have I rather suspect not So things being as fussy and finicky in this game as they tend to be, I think what I need to do is get a new general. Well, this guy's this guy's a defender, so I'll have him up north, and then bring one of the offensive guys down south to finish off that singleton unit there. We can't make some advances while they're not deployed yet. Well, the offensive part of this project uh, appears to be going poorly. It was worth a shot at least. Well, we'll at least have a something of an advantage on the defensive with Tedros. Hmm, odd that the Egyptians have a Frenchman commanding them, but although I suppose they did have some ties to France with the Suez Company or whatever. Let them uh, smash themselves against up against the wall a little bit there.
weaken their army, and maybe we can get a little sliver of, of, of land there. If nothing else, we might at least be able to get white peace out of them. Although, getting, nabbing Eritrea would be a nice thought. We're working on that first tooling workshop. Let's see how our uh, wood supply is doing. We're not really there yet, but we'll get there. We shall get there. Well, we if nothing else, we've been able to get more solid out of this. I think I may try the attack again with Tedros, and only Tedros. And now we have the advantage on offense. I think we might actually be able to beat the Egyptians here. I was not expecting to be able to get Eritrea back this soon, but Maybe we will. It is possible that we will. This war has proven to be more exciting than I thought it would. With Tedros fighting the good fight. Our defensive successful as well. Now, looking at this uh, at this uh, ledger number, uh, the uh, the fact that we upgraded our army without while while being while somewhat lacking in uh, the capacity to supply them with the guns they need uh, means we're we're going to need to uh, turn off our upgrades once this war is over. But hopefully, this war should be over soon, and it will end with us having the rest of, tr of traditional Abyssinian patrimony in our hands. Ah, Egypt is also involved in a diplomatic play against the Ottomans. So we we were we are are also fortunate to have encountered them with a, a distraction. Yeah, yeah, this is this is turning around in a hurry. Things are uh, things are really looking up for for Tedros and Ethiopia at this juncture. This. Is a highly successful foreign war. I'm going to need uh, yet another admin uh, building for it, though. I I'm going to wait for the tools to complete first because we do need those. On the subject of tools. Let's go for intense, intensive agriculture. I think once this war score gets below zero, I think they'll let us have Eritrea. Once the war score gets below zero for them. We've lost more blood, but they've lost more treasure.
Now, I believe the furthest north an invading Ethiopian army ever got, at least during the, Medi the age of the medieval empire, was to roughly, uh, roughly around a where the Aswan Dan Dam is now, whereupon the uh, Patriarch of Alexandria uh, came down and, and told him to knock it off because um, the uh, yeah the, it, it was kind of an, an interesting relationship there because the the the, the Atsa the emperor was a uh, ha had a kind of informal role as the protector of of Christians in Coptic lands but the uh, you know living in Egypt ruled by Muslims they had to make uh, they had to make certain concessions certain realities uh, one common threat le that uh, Ethiopia, Ethiopia would sometimes levy, although it was always an empty one, was uh, to uh, dam the Nile and, to, to, and uh, cut off its flow. Uh, Johannes, Tedros's successor, ended up uh, dying in, uh, in the land that was owned by the Khedivid, specifically in Sudan. Uh, helping to suppress the Mahdi Rebellion um, as uh, the Egyptians had promised to make certain concessions to to Ethiopia in turn. And also the Mahdi was, uh, the Mahdi was uh, threatening Ethiopia's northern territories. And Johannes died in battle there. Now, let's see if they'll accept our peace deal. I would like for them to do it soon. As this war has been rather financially expensive. We have our tooling workshop. We aren't making that many tools yet. But we're moving on to, I to iron nonetheless. Before I forget, let's move this admin up. We do want it as soon as possible, because we will be incorporating new lands soon. Okay. We have able, been able to enforce our war goal on Egypt, and now, wow, look at that. We, we now have, not only have we returned er, this culturally linked area of Eritrea to Ethiopian rule, we have also gotten ourselves another, yet another large and plentiful source of iron, plus a university. We're going to need paper for that, however, so... Let's get a paper mill running. Right here. Constructing that is going to have to wait, however. So, this has been an, an incredibly successful episode of our Let's Play. But further expansion of our industry and our administration is going to have to wait until next time. So until next time, I have been Marikati, you have been you. Remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you next time.